What's up, everyone? Welcome back. We've got Cloud9 versus FlyQuest here. We're going to be covering the champ select from the lounge. Seems like Cloud9's coming in here. Oh, they just got here. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Yep, that's JoJo. That's Fudge. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that's the that high in Vios. They're helping them cross the road. Wow. Kind gentlemen, honestly. Even better that we're blurring the uh, license plate, putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> They're letting the old ass people in. I love the suspenders look for Medio so, uh, over there, you know? Wow. All right, so we're going to be covering Champ Select for this one. Uh, C9 versus FlyQuest. C9, of course, we talked about it coming into the day, benefited quite greatly from the break. At least that's what we're expecting. Uh, any thoughts on this so far? Actually, before we even go to it, Bupo did have some thoughts on who would benefit the most from the two-week break, so let's take a look at that. It's going to be interesting to get a break because, like, obviously some teams that are struggling <coughs> C9 um, <laughs> are going to have some time to see if they can come back. Um, and that's pretty scary, you know, because, like, if this was just a regular split and you just go all the way through, maybe they boom all the way and don't make it back for playoffs mentally, right? With a break, who knows? Maybe uh, our dearest super team will come back. I just love hearing from Whippo just in general. Anytime you give him a mic, he is going to talk. <laughs> so, like, he is going to talk some shit. So, I appreciate it. Uh, Emily, what are your thoughts on that one? Just I love how he called back. C9 our dearest super team. It's it's like a bless your heart. Like, we all kind of know what that actually means. I don't know. Um, it is interesting. I do want to go through bans for yes. FlyQuest because obviously Ari is something that we kind of identified at top of day. Something Jojo might like to trot out. It was one of his standout picks uh, last split on EG in particular. Um, so seeing the Akali, Ari, and TF, obviously TF is a flex, but all coming out from FlyQuest on the red side bands. Yeah, like about a 53, 54% win rate as a top lane of the Twisted Fate, and we've seen it a little bit in the LCK, so it makes sense that FlyQuest is just taking it away uh, from Fudge, and Fudge in particular, as a player, um, I felt like he's been doing quite well within his individual lane, even through some of the disasters we've seen from Cloud9. Uh, his actual lane stats have been quite good. Problem is, game's kind of just escaping them <laughs> before he's even gotten a chance to really participate. So at least from the laning phase, it's been a positive. Um, I saw a tweet that he had made 20 minutes before, uh, I guess, game one, where he was like, Renekton got buffed, guys. Just putting that out yep. there. <laughs> so if we see a Renekton pick, uh, he's going to be on it. We know how much he loves Renekton. Oh, he loves Renekton. Afro, what's your thoughts so far on the, the drafts that's coming out? We got a Nautilus Dude, Senna. A lot of people love this Nautilus Senna lane. Yeah. It looked great the last game, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I've, we've been seeing it uh, explode. I talked to Zazel about this just now, but like we've seen it explode in popularity across mm. LCK and LPL um, with Senna, Nautilus, and potentially the Huey, but they're flopping over towards Nico. I would like be really interested to see JoJo bringing out the Huey. It's something we didn't see a lot of in the LCS. Um, and again, something else that we've seen a lot more in the two weeks we've had off. Falling already kind of seems like a big focus for us. Oh God. Oh, I mean, wait a minute. Look, this is interesting. That, that just means- insta lock. Okay. Yeah, it's been locked in. So that's going to be Karma going into mid lane. Technically can still be a flex top lane save. Mm -hmm. Could be said towards Varus, but I don't think, I mean, the thing, that's the thing about FlyQuest. I'm going to put that out there immediately. They have been the team that's actually make the best use of uh, flex picks and counter picks as a mm -hmm. whole uh, so far this split. So already really difficult for C9 to kind of know where these player champs are going. Yeah, especially since they're on red side, they do tend to like to save that counter pick for Whippo in the top lane. And that's where we've seen a lot of the spicier uh, things out of FlyQuest in their drafts as well. Media call outs, just, you know, cleanse alert. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the amount of pick that they have so far on FlyQuest side, the Ash, the Varus, Thing you just have to be constantly concerned about. Um, I will say, usually when you have both Ash and Karma on your team, there's going to be a, a quick scaling question. So, just something to take note of for FlyQuest is that you get a lead, you want to keep it, especially versus what is a pretty strong three pick from uh, C9 side of Azir and Senna. And yeah, we see Leeson, Ben coming out for Fly, Zinjo coming out for C9. Um, I am. Like with C9 specifically, obviously we've harped a lot on their drafts previously as the J4 ban comes out for FlyQuest. Um, but I think a lot of it is also just court, like actual visible coordination mm -hmm. between the team as well. Like we've seen 
players have some individually pretty strong performances, um, but during their losses, it really seems like they just haven't been able to put it on in the same page, or they were out team fought, like for example, in the 100 Thieves series, by a team that was just ended up being more well coordinated and had better target selection and team fights. That's a question I actually have for you, Afro, because C9's like first three games were kind of what we expected, stomp laning phase, pretty good coordination, but then in the four games that they just lost consecutively, it felt like that just went completely by the wayside. Like, from the games that you've seen from C9, where do you think that's coming from? Uh, just, it's just a misread on how the matchups are supposed to go, when are you supposed to spike, that kind of thing. Uh, and it happens to, you know, every team where, you know, you get a little too comfortable on certain picks and then all of a sudden, you know, it's changed. Yeah. And now you have to change everything. So uh, it just takes a little bit. A lot of teams just need time in that regard. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, their losses and stuff like that coming here after the break. Uh, I expect them to be able to do very well for Fly Quest. That yeah. makes sense to me. Once again, with the Maokai locked in, we do see FlyQuest is going to be presumably saving that um, five <laughs> counter pick for Yo, Whippo. Is that jungle again. Maokai? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it could be. Okay. It's very possible. Like, I'm expecting it. If I were to say what FlyQuest is probably going for the uh, draft, I'm expecting the Karma to go mid and it mm -hmm. to be a various Ash bot side with the oh. Maokai jungle. So that's my expectation. It is a croc top lane for Fudge. And he a, called it out. And a Nidalee, though. Which True. is another champ who received buffs. Uh, and this is a really, really interesting combo, right? Because it's kind of been denigrated in the LCS, not for picking it, but in terms of execution. Because with the Renekton Italy, you do really want to try to snowball that super early. They work really well in tandem together. Um, so this composition coming out of C9, very interesting. Yeah, and just good setup. I mean, yes, we already talked about the, the Renekton setup, and it's been a classic, of course, historically, as you mentioned, the three-stack dive is always going to be a threat. But on top of that, you have Nautilus, which I think is a big win. The fact that any team fight, you have good setup for just Nidalee to land her Q fairly easily. So um, this is a pretty stock standard draft from C9 side. I mean, it's new for this meta that we're seeing both Nidalee and Renekton, so it's exciting in that way. But the fact that now that the Nidalee buffs happen, the Renekton buffs happen, and we're immediately going towards it, kind of speaks volumes on the comfort that these players have had on the champions historically. One interesting thing is Whippo is taking that Varus top. All right, let's head it over to Jet. Let's see what he has to say here. Thanks, guys. In celebration of LCS face-off, we're going to have JoJo and Inspired exchanging some words right before the game. Former junglers. JoJo, right now, buddy. Well, you're my... Well, JoJo's currently testing his audio. Inspired. What's up? Inspired, what do you have to say to your your, your former mid laner here? Uh, what, what am I supposed oh, to tell you? Scary. Well, what do you want to say to him? How do you get in his head before a game? Well, I mean, uh, he's a good player. I, I hope he will manage to carry his for not that good teammates. So, I mean, I, I think Inspired's a great player. I think he'll succeed greatly. Um, much success to him. Is this it? Yeah, this it. is how you get in his head? That's you build him up? I mean, he is a good player. I so. mean, yeah. I'm not a trash talk. I'm a nice guy, you know? Yeah, why would I trash talk him? Like, he is already suffering playing with those four bots. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but much success to him, much, much success to me. I hope we both play well, so yeah. Fair enough. Thanks, guys. Let's get into the game. Friendly guys over there. No trash talk. You know, you're just playing with four bots. Yeah, I'm not going to trash talk. <laughs> His whole team sucks. They're all bots, but. <laughs> he, he XD, League of Legends. It's a, uh, a friendly game. Isaac. Friendly game, yep. Friendly game when you're playing with your friends against your friends. Yep. Sometimes, not even when you're playing with your friends, depending <laughs> on who your friends are and uh -huh. uh, how seriously they take League of Legends. But this is going to be a huge match for both of these teams. FlyQuest. Obviously, in the hunt for that first overall spot. They want to end the regular season in first place. Oh, yeah. Cloud9, that is where they were expected to be. It is a far cry from where they are now, but they had a two-week break to fix things, to work on stuff. And I've been hearing rumors that they are popping off in scrims, but as we know, it doesn't always translate <laughs> stage. Yeah, it's it's funny how the, the scrim rumors have gone with this team, because also at the very beginning of the of the split, everyone mm -hmm. is saying this super team is legit. You know, they're I gonna be really good for like two weeks. Yep, there you go. So maybe they bought themselves another two weeks with uh, some more scrim <laughs> juice. But it's really fun because FlyQuest, as you're saying, is the team that Cloud9 have to forcibly take this from. 
you know, they're supposed to be the ones wearing the crown. Yeah. And camera on Jensen right here. Uh, Jensen versus his old squad, one of his old squads, uh, that he was mainly known for, trying to deny them. So there are a lot of relationships, uh, you know, between these two teams. It's not just, yeah. uh, you know, the JoJo and Inspired there, but Jensen as well has his say about it. And it's it's been a very good split for him. He's been talking a lot of trash himself. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he, he's had obviously some, some rougher times on Dignitas, you know, didn't have the kind of performance that he wanted to have there. Also, obviously, was just on a, an objectively weaker team. Now he's back on a really strong team. You know, he wants to be able to prove how good he is. Uh, people had been hating on Jensen for these last couple of years, I feel like. So he's trying to prove himself once again. It's it's interesting how, you know, veterans can kind of go through these ebbs and flows where he was just unanimously agreed upon as, as basically at least top two for a long time in the entire league. Then people really did cool on him. But again, he's back in that discussion amongst the best mid laners in the league he's gonna have a big challenge here up against jojo who i think still has been playing very well individually even in losses mm -hmm. his laning stats are really impressive he doesn't always get a lot of help and he gets a lot of focus <laughs> from the enemy teams uh -huh. and he's still doing really well in those one v yeah i mean inspired said uh you know you're doing really well even if we're playing with four bots so <laughs> <laughs> we recognize there we're as talking well. intermediate beginner <laughs> at what level didn't they just release some new ai some new ones yeah there, there's some new ai for the bots now yeah. I mean, ai is pretty good oh, in some wait, games that's why the scrims got better <laughs> oh okay <laughs> thank you ryan okay. thank you ryan uh, oh. for the resurgence we know what to think <laughs> If they have their resurgence. Uh, the draft, I think, was really fun, too. Um, it's funny because, you know, the Nidalee buffs were actually not even on this patch. They were yeah, on 14.3. 14 yep. But since you always want to pair Nidalee with a hard CC stun setup, and Renekton is basically the dream combo there, mm -hmm. the Renekton buffs were on this patch, and that's what moves the needle. So we are going to have the Giga healing buffs for Nidalee come in, which is super nice for your other carries later on for the team fighting, where Nidalee has always, you know, been great for early game and invading yep. enemy jungle. Power clear. Exactly. Try trying to have really high pressure and high tempo on the map. But now even, like, your Azir will be happy. Oh, more attack speed from the yep. heal later on. You know, you can... Uh, can really make some some more versatile plays with the champ now. I think I think it's really a key thing to point out. You know that it's it's not just that it got buffed. It got buffed in this way that still makes it really valuable in the later stages of the game. The heal becomes really significant. You know, not just the attack speed, but the actual heals themselves are really big now. Um, and I think you know as much as I I already know people are already gonna be popping off about how this was a garbage pick if C9 lose because everyone hates <laughs> yeah, Nidalee. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think it does kind of fit the play style of Blaver a lot more than some of the stuff that he had been doing. It felt like he had been kind of strapped on tank duty a lot of the time, and we've been having more you know tank jungle enchanter bot. Now we have engage bot. We have heavy farming jungle. I think that suits their play style, and I do think it makes some sense. While we're scrolling through uh, tweets here on broadcast, did they already show the tweet of Fudge? 40 minutes ago, he tweeted, just reminding everybody, Renekton got buffed on this patch. <laughs> and he was the last one to play Renekton in LCS also. It's he like, knew. <laughs> he, he is literally Renekton. Fudge is the go-to Renekton uh, in Cloud9. Surprise, surprise. Tough out there. It's buffed. He's back on the Renekton duty, but it's in the desired pairing here. So it's funny because both teams always know whenever you have this combo, they're like, all right, well, guess what? They're gonna Nidalee's play going to Nidalee top. Renekton, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna try and stun you into spear uh, combo. So you have to be very careful with how you manage your wave in the matchup. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of pressure here for Whippo, who I think has been a giant star in the top lane for basically the entirety of this season. Uh, he's been very outspoken too, and very confident player here. So we'll see how he manages one of the most dreaded top lane jungle combos. And there's been a lot of talk about early MVP candidates inspired a name on a lot of people's mind when it comes to those MVP conversations. You know, how will he be able to cover Whippo on those potential dives? Uh, he is a guy who always seems to be right place, right time, knows how to play from ahead, knows how to play from behind to cover these potential dives, to cover these potential plays. As FlyQuest, five men stacked up. They are going to be charging out here towards bot side. They do have an incredibly strong level one. Double Halo Blades Marksman plus Karma has got to be some of the most powerful level ones you can have. So you can kind of just walk in, see if you can find someone, and there's not going to be that much of a cost to it. Yeah, and Maokai, of course, is one of the Raptor assassinators uh, <laughs> with, the, with the damage on the Q. We can take out the whole squad pretty effortlessly. So FlyQuest, they invade those Raptors. They get the vision down. 
You can get a nice little zombie ward there. Proc I think they're just going to start down here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're going to split the map here versus a Senna Nautilus lane. You've got Ash and Varus, part of the reason that they answer with this. Minions Try and pressure fun. them. Keep that Nidalee at bay. Keep it away from, from any sort of interference. And since it is going to be a supportive non-farming Senna here, the fasting Senna for Berserker, mm -hmm. it just makes it really hard for the Nautilus to actually farm. There's so much poke damage. Ash and Varus is brutal, and then your jungler's splitting the map too, and you're just like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, can be really tough. It is interesting, though, because it's the inverse of what we actually saw last game, right, where it was the farming Senna. It was that supportive style on the Nautilus. This time, obviously, the Nautilus is going to take TP as a result. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm almost always on the this style Senna, fasting Senna. I just yeah. feel like you get so much she extra takes value. Senna. Gotta hold her down. Don't want her to get gold. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want her to get souls. Order broke. Though. It's it's a nice thing though because okay. you want her to get rich souls. in souls. Yeah. Rich in souls. Exactly. Yeah. Rich in souls. Uh, it does mean that they're making Whiplo's job as hard as possible though mm -hmm. because yeah we're splitting the bottom side of the map for our advantage for the side of FlyQuest, but it does mean Whiplo and the Aatrox is, guess what? Left alone up there versus the Renekton in Italy. And this is really creating that scenario where you're super open to criticism if that risky duo doesn't pay off for Cloud9. Absolutely. And they are up against a really tough laning duo here. Varus, Ash, double hail of blades. You can see Busio already using the barrier. This is very common. You step forward, you just start shooting them. You force them to trade into you, and then you pop the bear to get that beneficial early trade here. So that is exactly what he does. Jensen going to be playing the Karma mid. Not something I feel like we've seen in the LCS so far, but Karma obviously has been getting play and support and has been really popular as a solo laner for quite some time. It's a really strong pick. It does scale well, especially when you're playing with this double marksman here. You know, the value from something like an Arden Sensor, even Whippo's going to get value out of that, becomes pretty crazy. So I'll be interested to see if he is going to go like full AP or one AP item into some of the supportive items, which I actually prefer in these kind of comps where you have a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, I I would guess that he's going to go the blasting combo with the horizon focus and okay. the malignant. Full damage. Uh, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm guessing for his solo lanes, because... Uh, that's what's really prominent now, but you're you're definitely right where you could go one of the more supportive builds. Um, you know, let's see, is Busio yeah. going to be Caria in the bottom lane as, <laughs> as this ass support or not? Uh, if he is, you, you better be buying that Iron Sensor. Let me <laughs> yeah, tell you exactly. what, that guy's going to pump out some damage. So we'll see how it's going to work out. Jensen taking the bad end of a lot of these trades here. Jojo doing well thus far, just keeping the minions between them. Uh, there is that mantra. Uh, Soul Flare coming out, and they're not going to be able to actually tag Jojo. Pretty common to see people looking to actually splash that from the range means onto him. Also, really interesting to see Jojo taking Grasp. I can't say I've seen this. People generally do just take Fleet uh, to be able to actually have that kind of sustained style. But the Grasp, he's going to be trading pretty heavily into it. I will say I'm seeing more and more champions take double scaling HP runes and then just splash Grasp in, and it's become a little bit of like this arms race of Wait, all of a sudden you have like 3k HP now and you're yeah. and you're getting really tanky. So I don't know if he's really going to cook and do like Roa and stuff because I've seen some people do crazy stuff like that or if it's just going to be, hey, I think Grasp is pretty good for the lane and then I'll be normal. Yeah, these these Grasp is here. It's getting kind of annoying. Just just with a little <laughs> bit of, a, of, of HP. When when you go in for the big plays, though. Do something for the tanks. You know, Come a, on. A, a little bit of extra HP goes a long way. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how he pulls it off here. Um, Jojo. Uh, no... That nope. Nautilus has no farm, by the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, that's kind of what we expected, right? It's, yeah. it's a top lane, little bit of extra advantage there. I mean, Fudge got... Yes. So you told you told me you like it when the Senna doesn't farm. Yeah. How do you like it when both the Senna and the Nautilus don't farm? That's not good. <laughs> that's not Somebody's good? Somebody's got to farm it. <laughs> oh, my God! Someone's don't get ridiculous. There's there's money on the ground. Okay. And pick it up. You're just not picking it you're up. You're too good for that? Yeah, it's like they're walking down the street I'll and they pick it see up. it. The only problem is uh, you're, you're trying to pick it up, and then Masu and Busio slap your hand. Oh, uh, right? yeah, that's kind of messed that's up. It's not for you. No. Okay. That is not for you. Is there, like, do you have, like, a, a limit on, like, how how much money it has to be for you to be willing to pick it up? We'll see if there's going to be a dive here, the stunt into the spear. Hey, what do you no know? chance for Aatrox. Now you see him, now you don't. Renekton in Italy, baby. It's back, and it's a first bud for Biber. Run from it. Dread it. You know it's coming. A stun into a spear, but we've seen it a thousand times. Still works. Good as old. They do get the playoff under tower two, so uh, that is nice. Even though Whipple has his teleport, so Whipple right back out to the lane uh, while Blabber picks up these uh, grubbies. The benefits of splitting top end.
You can um, see uh, these are the, the stats of these two, you know, throughout this split so far this year. Also in the head-to-head, -head, Buffo is two to one. Uh, so they've only played against each other three times. So these are not just their head-to-head -head stats, yeah. but head-to-head -head, it is two to one in Buffo's favor. And you see there, the, the big thing that stands out, of course, you know, these guys are number one and number two in average laning stats here with the goal difference, but the solo kills. Whippo has, has done a lot solo, uh, you know, getting getting for himself. Whereas uh, Fudge here with the goose egg, and you know, when Nidalee comes over and and uh, is the one to, to land the spear, still gonna be zero for solo. But it's yep. a team game. Team game. That's why you pick that combo. Yeah. It's, Super it's easy. KP kill. just went up. Exactly. That's a dub. We'll count that. Plus, let's be honest, as a top laner. You could be down 20 CS, but if you solo kill that guy, you're like, oh, you're flexing on him. You know, you're feeling good. Definitely true. Yeah. Uh, the, honestly, the best feeling in the game for anyone is solo killing their opponent. And then having your teammates hype you up and type diff of The question whatever. marks, whatever diff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With the question marks, that's that's maximum dopamine. Yeah. It's interesting how that has evolved. Question marks to be the harshest flame or the or the biggest praise that you can yeah. get. Jensen versus Cloud9. Actually a better record than I would have expected, you know, given some of his times on some of the teams where he was struggling. So this is against Cloud9, obviously a lot of time with TL, some time with Dig. Yeah. 18 and 23. Not too bad. Yeah, I think a lot of those W's are coming from his time on Team Liquid. You don't know that. System. I uh, actually do know that. Cause okay. <laughs> well, you called me on it. You call I didn't expect you to call on that. I thought you were just going to be like, you know what? You're right. Sometimes you get called. You know, I went for it. <laughs> there you go. Didn't Wait. work out. Speaking of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, though, yeah. Jensen, uh, this time around on FlyQuest, he, he's the one at the top of the standings actually looking mm -hmm. down at Cloud9. But Cloud9 but wishes they could be. <laughs> they're also staring down this gold lead. Um, of course, a lot off of, you know, jungle and top side of the map. And mm -hmm. and Grubbies versus Dragon. Of course, the Grubs do give a lot more experience than the extra gold um, as well, in addition to the buff versus the Dragon that does not give as much. All right. Well, Vulcan back here down towards bot. Farm has equalized. There's going to be a little bit more farm here to be picked up, you know, for Masu if he can get back in time. Busio obviously would like to try to thin that way of hold it for him if he can. Uh, but Vulcan doing all right. And Berserker's actually picked up a decent amount of farm himself. So I think what they are doing is very likely Berserker is picking up farm until the farm penalty comes in. Yep. And then, you know, just proccing that support. So you can do those optimizations. And I'm always a fan of once you fully transform your support, giving more of the gold to the Senna at that point anyway. Yeah. It's like uh, when people are like, oh, yeah, I'm going on a new diet. I'm fasting. But, uh, you know, I'm also still going to have... That cheesecake's looking pretty nice. I'm still nice. having lunch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I'm kind of going to fast. Uh, but not that much. All right, we'll see Inspired in some trouble now. Oh, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow Ooh. from downtown locks down Fudge. You know what? That's the FlyQuest version of the Renekton Nidalee. They actually got the, the spear, but it was a ash arrow instead of a spear. <laughs> and Busio nails him from downtown to set up Whippo. Whippo's like, I could do that too, buddy. Yep. Two is on the other foot. The croc is on the other boot. It, in fact, it's easy to kill people that are stunned. Yeah. Facts. It's a good strat. Yeah. Why Stun them up. Honestly, really nice stuff there from Busio, though. You know, we had the questions of, is this bottom lane going to be, you know, the Caria uh, style Ash here? Uh, or is it going to be a flop? And so far, Masu and Busio, who are a big story for this FlyQuest roster, the, the youngest on the team. Uh, Masu, of course, was the most valuable prospect. Mm -hmm. And then Busio was the most valuable prospect the previous year. So combining them That's as like the, value. the young guys on the team to, to, to really come up under the leadership of all the other veterans from the top side of the map here for FlyQuest uh, has been a recipe for success so far this year. So far, it sounds like they're getting the gold star from Kobe. And Chim Chim is a fan as well. That's the second gold star. <laughs> there you go, two gold That's stars. We'll see how many it can get as it's going to be Blabber back on the Grubbies. He got all three, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, on the first one. So going to be looking to try to get all six. At the very least, if you get five, you start getting those Void Might Spines, which does feel really, really nice. Um, but we'll see the Crane Chain and Crystal Arrow. This um, one is going to whiff, unless it's, okay. it's another cross map one. <laughs> that one, we we didn't see that. It's chill. We saw. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, I called you earlier. Yeah, yeah. You called me on that yeah. one. You know How's it feel, Kobe? Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> All right. I understand. We did. We did, in fact, see it as well. Um, swing and a miss. It's fine. Uh, they're still. They're still keeping the pressure up. You know, trying to push under tower here. 
Of course, they're not the ones getting the Void Grubs, but they're the ones with the double range access to the tower, so they've gotten the turret plate. Yeah. Uh, some of the times when you get full six Void Grubs, you don't get a lot of the returns early in the game when you don't have super hard pushing lanes. And Cloud9 are going to have to get those benefits a little bit later uh, as you split into a little bit of split pushing mm -hmm. and try and get those towers. And we'll see. I mean, because so far, Whipple looking pretty good. But we're going to have the depth charge coming in. It's going to try to set up that spear. Busio blocks the spear, but might be to his own chagrin. Egg on his face. Blabber going to be able to take him down. Does protect Mossa at the very least. And does save him from flashing. And doesn't use his flash as well. Has to give up his life, though. All right, Cloud9 on the warpath. That is two for Blabber. Two for the Nidalee. This is a champion. You mentioned it previously. If they don't win with it, if it does poorly, people love to pile on. And especially if the Nidalee is getting all the money too, a lot of weight here is on Blabber's shoulders. We'll see yeah. though, because uh, it's really nice to rush into an early Lich Bane. This is the best, you know, assassin burst damage uh, AP item that you've got in the game since Storm Surge was absolutely murdered. And so Lich Bane picked up here super early for Blabber off the first two kills. See if he can make FlyQuest really feel that pain. Opponents after this. Yeah, we'll see. And obviously, that last fight on top side, you know, he called out. Blabber obviously got the first blood, and it was Blippo who got a kill on to Fudge. So, you know, he should be ahead in gold. Uh, there was a plate that went over to Fudge's blade, so it might be close. But drops are back. If you didn't know, when the next six explodes, maybe you'll win a prize. You got to watch on LOL Esports. Watch out LOL Esports.com, I do believe. Uh, to be able to claim those prizes. And Bustio, as you called out, has that enchanted crystal arrow ready and waiting. Going to be searching with the Hawkshot. Doesn't find any target, but they do find an easy dragon. Yeah, he was hovering there in the little pocket of Fog of War, standing well, behind going the going in. Dominus Pop. Going to be looking for the Ruthless Predator on the Whippo. He's trying to kite back. He's got no cooldowns right now, but Blabber's coming in. Blabber with the heal. It's a flash out from Fudge. Going to be able to keep him alive and narrowly dodge the Enchanted Crystal Arrow there. They get the kill on to Bwipo. Again, it goes to Blabber, though. Three and zero on the Nidalee. Okay, Blabber shows up again. Another kill for Nidalee. It's going to be a fed jungle. Oh, we're really going to put Nidalee to the test this game. Mm -hmm. Let's see it. Uh, checking on uh, Berserker's stacks here. 39 so far for the Senna. Uh, even with so much pressure coming from, uh, you know, kind of hard lane matchup early on. Jungle getting split against them. Oh, there's the Emperor's Divide pushing Jensen back. Jensen trying to flash out, but I don't think he can create enough space. He gets the Mantra Tether. It gives him a little bit of a heal, but it's not going to be enough. Thumbs up from JoJo. Inspired answering with one in kind. He's like, yeah, okay, I see you, bro. <laughs> Nicely done. Berserker now stepping forward onto Busio here. Busio should be fine. Has the meetings between him and Vulcan, so no chance of a hook coming through, but it's Fudge slicing forward once again. Poking away here at the Whippo, and he's got the Sundered Sky down now. It's Demolish on, on Jojo, because he's playing Grass. It's Demolish yeah. on the Renekton as well, and it is six Void Grubs. So when they get access, they're really starting to rack up the gold, and all of a sudden, it's a 3k gold lead now here for Cloud9. After that kill on top side, a couple plates went down. Kill mid, a couple plates go down. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of how jungle does give you extra gold for your laners. Even if I'm taking all the kills, as nearly as Blabber, I focus on the early Void Grubs, so you get your, your global gold there, and then once you get a kill, just go to town on the turret plates. Mm -hmm. JoJo gets paid, and he gets his Leandries for it. Made that deposit early, mm -hmm. you know? Now it's paying off. So don't cry to me when I'm well, about the kills, okay? Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I play with Flowers, yeah. he always tells me killing the Void Grubs is my gank. Yeah, there you go. He's like, hey, I did something for you. Now go to the tower, get some gold from that. Because yeah. he's not coming all the way up there. There's no camp in top lane. He's not going to give you a fish, Azale. He's teaching you how to fish. He's teaching me how to grub. We'll, exactly. see, uh, we'll see if that pays off here for Blabber. Four kills on him. What kind of build do you want to see him go from here? Obviously, you know, we're seeing a lot of Lich being very, very powerful. When you're 4-0, you're playing the Nidalee. Are you just going full AP from here? Do you like some of the more supportive styles that some people go into with this more strong heal style that we see from Nidalee? Honestly, for competitive, I kind of do. Um, for solo queue, definitely the snowballing. Just play for yourself, build for yourself. Just completely blast people. I feel like for competitive, since there's going to be a lot more five on fives, mm -hmm. um, and it, it just makes it really hard against good players to do, you know, full nidalee actually making a lot of use of uh, of cat form and, and going all the way in. Um, maybe spread the love and use your gold for for a little bit of a, of a supportive angle. At least the safety of a zonias is mm -hmm. super nice when you do choose your moments and go for some of the big plays. The extra time there. Um, 
playing around the rest of your team, being able to back you up. And Blabber, as you know, likes to be one of the first in. So mm -hmm. Sonya's definitely a super good item for him. Yeah, allows you to just dive right in there, make something happen. And we are really ahead. Sometimes you can dive right in there, one-shot someone, go into the stasis, have the rest of the squad come in to protect you. JoJo, by the way, I just checked, he's progressed 36 times. That's kind of insane. And you are getting HP every single time you do proc that, you know, permanently increasing your health by seven. So I'm not gonna do the math, but that's quite a bit of HP given in there. He has the Leandries, he has the Merc Treads. He has a Cloth Armor in his inventory as well, which maybe means he's going towards the Zonias or something like that as well. He has double Lethality users in the bot lane. Aatrox almost always built some Lethality as well up in the top lane. So there's definitely value in having at least a little bit of armor, oh, even yeah. if you just sit on it. Yeah, definitely, definitely true. And especially when you're playing Poke like this, so you're playing against a, a Varus and a Karma, um, even to some degree an Ash here. And any little bit of extra padding is going to be super nice. And now JoJo can transfer into the side lanes here. Dream scenario for Cloud9. Mid turret taken already. The entire jungle just opens up to you. Uh, and you get to have some more side laning with not only your Renekton, but also your Azir. And JoJo confidently is going to move up, make use of his Demolish again, make use of those six Void Grubs again, mm -hmm. and really snowball. This is what people are talking about for scrims for Cloud9 completely blasting so really good job by them moving oh, the game look forward. at that hook there from vulcan buffered on the chains of corruption it's all for nothing from masu doesn't amount to much there it does use the ulti and as you said they have been looking good now the tp coming in here and it's the call in for help as whippo needs it from jensen he arrives the dominus has been popped can fudge win in the 1v2 doesn't look like it but it is getting close the sundered sky heals are making a lot of time and the cooldowns come back up there's the dawning shadow from cross map fudge gets the kill in the 1v2 with a little help from his pal berserker Whippo going to trade one back, but it cost him his flash to do it. It cost the TP from Jensen as yeah. well. You're calling worth. You definitely are for Fudge there. Huge, huge. And now he's going to get a teleport from JoJo. Can JoJo catch him? They see him. All right. Okay. JoJo going to be stepping up here. We'll see if he can actually find it. Um, and it's going to be Whippo going to getting chased down and taken down here. Easy kill. No ult, no flash, nothing really he can do about that. So JoJo trades one back in a neat super extended play. It's uh -huh. even better for Cloud9. Was already worth and now just got extra games on top of it. <laughs> nice little bonus. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know, you, you order some nuggies and there's an extra one. <laughs> nice. You get yeah. a bonus nuggie. Perfect. Sweet. JoJo with the, uh, the bonus nugget and... So, uh, you know, he gets a kill for himself, actually, too. Mm -hmm. He's gone Frozen Heart on top of, uh, you know, a Ooh, lot of the HP. I was not expecting that. I will tell you I'll tell you that much. I thought it was just going to be uh, working towards the Zonias or Seekers or JoJo's something. JoJo's going in. That's what, that's what I'm seeing. JoJo is getting yeah. in there. He's going to make use of that aura. He's going to make sure that aura is in range to apply the attack speed reduction. Yep. And uh, we'll see how that does pay off for him. I mean, the grass, so far, so good. And he is going to have a ton of HP, very likely is doing that scaling HP rune style. Um, a lot of people are doing a rise, but it has become very popular across so many different champions. Dominus being caught there from Fudge will push Wivo back, who responds with the World Ender. Nice sidestep on the dredge line coming through as Vulcan fires that out, but Wivo able to dodge it. Either way, though, Cloud9 claim the tower. All right, they're not going to stop there either. Look at this pressure. Love it. Rotate right over to mid lane where JoJo had pushed up the wave. Everybody spawn your Void Mites. They get in range. The Void Mites keep coming. The siege lasts even longer. All right, quick little update here. We are having some production issues. Uh, have lost power in some area. We won't be able to change the video source. We are just going to be sticking on the one observer for now. Uh, we'll give you any updates as those do come in. But Cloud9 pushing forward here. Again, Again. buffers on the chains of corruption. Vulcan looking clean on the Nautilus. I mean, Cloud9 Cloud overall are so calm right now. It seems to be such a clinical game for them with this draft, playing off the pressure for top side of the map. They're fine with the jungle split early on. You know, whatever, uh, boohoo, Vulcan didn't get a few extra CS on the Nautilus in the, in the first stages and one turret plate went over. But the snowball, incredibly effective for them, especially now that they're opening up the map and they've got all these split push options. It just seems like this, this Bruiser Azir is going to be a menace in the side lane. And Fudge as well already had a few laughs for himself here too. So Cloud9, pretty good uh, mid-stage game where they can just play those side lanes, use their split push. They've got the teleport ready here on Fudge. 
Um, Cloud9, of course, when we're trying to talk up, or FlyQuest, for talk up their uh, their options here. Jensen, of course, did go with the Blasting combo, the classic here for Karma, the Horizon Focus, and the, and the Malignants. Um, but it's, you know, they're they're really going to need to get some value out of this poke. They've got Lethality Varus on two items and Karma on two items right now. Like, you you got to get some value now with this. Yeah, it's it's hard. And Blabber, you know, he just did the pit stop on that Seeker's arm guard. He's going straight towards Death Cap. So those heals are going to be massive. There's also Senna heals. I feel like it's going to be really tough to poke them down, even if you're landing those abilities. You have to look more for like a hundred to zero burst than you do just a little bit of chip here. Vulcan moving up towards top side. So Fudge playing safe on that bottom side, as he knows his entire team is pushing up towards this top lane tier two and should be able to claim it pretty easily. Jensen, Busio, Masu in the area but it is going to be too little too late there from FlyQuest as they're just going to watch another tower crumble and Cloud9's gold lead extend to 6.4K. Absolutely beautiful from Cloud9. People are wondering, is this team going to make the changes necessary in the two-week break to climb back up the standings? And so far here versus the number one team, it seems like a resounding yes. Mm -hmm. Playing off the early pressure, uh, keeping up pressure on the map here for... Every single secondary tower down here, 22 minutes approaching. And now, if they just push into the jungle, take over vision in jungle, they can force a lot of these plays on the Baron. It's it's so early here uh, for for FlyQuest. It's kind of kind of rough scenario because you've got a lot of turn potential. The Azir with the tanky build can turn Abyssal on now you. now even as well. Yeah, and Vulcan is ready to go. He's got flash ready on Nautilus, ultimate ready. He's got his level 11 for the rank two ultimate, by the way. Vulcan is two levels above Busio. So, uh, yeah, I mean, plan for Cloud9 looks wide open here, and FlyQuest got to get creative. Mm -hmm. Fudge on the round here, but Busio's in the area. We'll see if they can chase him down. The slice Arrow. connects on nothing, so he has no dice. There's the Enchanted Crystal Darrow. The tether's going to be there. The TPs are coming in here. JoJo arrives, Blabber in the area. FlyQuest will have to disengage. Inspired hunting on the side. JoJo goes for it. Nice flash out from Busio. It's going to keep him safe from the Emperor's Divide. But JoJo tethered up and Whippo's flashing in. Here comes the Dawning Shadow from Berserker. Just barely going to keep JoJo alive. Who's just too damn tanky for FlyQuest. Vulcan now in the back line. Blabber is here. FlyQuest are shattered and they're on the run. No one dropping on the Cloud9 side. You try to burst down that Azir. This tanky build paying dividends there big time for JoJo. Yep, with the Nidalee, with the Senna, keeping them upright, and Baron is going down for sure. Cloud9, they don't drop a player. They have dominated this game. They have dominated this top side of the map and this Void Pit. All six mites, mm -hmm. plus the Rift Herald, plus the Baron here for them as well. Cloud9 controlling purple. And look at that bottom side of the map too. JoJo even gonna chase FlyQuest away. Slap yeah. their hands away this yeah. time around from the dragon. That's not yours. <laughs> Get off the map. It was theirs earlier, so they were, but they were just blending it to them, you uh, know? Yeah. They were they were wrenching it out. The time's Baron up. Pit, the Baron Pit has been Cloud 9's the whole game. Uh -huh. And now it's Cloud 9's time to take over the timeshare down in the Dragon Pit as well. <laughs> the vacation home. Yeah, it's the vacation home, exactly. <laughs> they leased it out to FlyQuest for the first two dragons. And yeah. they're like, ah, oh, you know what? Now it's prime time. You got like the, the winter months or something. Exactly. Yeah. We already did everything there is to do up in the up in the Baron Pit. They took the grubs, uh -huh. they took a herald. Work they got is the done. Baron. Now it's they're like, going for This place is boring. Let's check out something else. All right, well, let's see if FlyQuest can maybe get some objective bounties. This is what you're trying to look at now. You can tell out. by the tone of voice that you don't believe they can get that. Well, the top lane, they could for Yo, sure get Joe that one trouble, at least. Though. We'll see if they're going to be able to get him killed. They did lock him down. A nice buffer there on the W from Inspire, dodging out on the Emperor's Divide. Vulcan now needs to go on the run. The Chains of Corruption making a big difference there from Masu, able to nail Jojo, and they do lock him down despite that tanky build to get the kill. Whippo is pushing out on that top side. Not going to be able to go any further. Cloud9 will get the dragon, but it is at least one pick, and it's a little bit of time that they buy themselves. Yeah, FlyQuest, we finally get our first kind of opening here. Objective bounty on top side while they get the pick onto his ear. So, as you're saying, some money back to them, but Cloud9 kind of quickly stabilized. They're like, okay. You know, nice nice little pick there for you. And yeah, you got your objective bounty. They retreat back to the dragon and uh, try and at least keep the pace there. Yep, and Blabber did turn one of those two rods into a Zonia's. Now is back on two rods. So he's restocked up. We'll see if they're going to become a hat this time. When you go for the early Lich main, that's adding another AP ratio to your kit. So like, you just need to get more Many AP. rods as you want. Can't have too many. Death cap is, is actually amazing. Mm -hmm. um, adding an extra, extra ratio in there. Now you get the multiplier. 
looking pretty beefy. You can see opportunity has been purchased for both Masu and Berserker. An item that's definitely gaining a lot of steam uh, as people are realizing how strong it can be, especially in these poke style champions. It works perfectly with Varus's kit, right? You're sitting back, you're not constantly hitting with the lethality. When you're out of combat for a bit, you get the bonus lethality, you get that extra damage on those big Qs that you're looking for. But it's Cloud9 grouping up five top, looking to push forward here. They've got a lot of engage. Flyquest is going to be have to be so careful. Nature's Grasp used here from Inspire just to keep them safe so they can clear out the wave as Masu is <laughs> running back. Jojo, Jojo got hit. It took that arrow in the face. He had Merc Treads and he just got it one niddly heal and he's like, thumbs up. <laughs> nice one. He just yeah. stares it down. Tanky well, Azir. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, the Senate, the Senate heal there on, on Blabber, 220. Mm. The heal that was thrown on Jojo was 300 as well from uh, Blabber. So that is a ridiculous amount of healing. If you don't kill them off instantly, the poke just means nothing. Cloud9 seem to have really expertly answered what FlyQuest have crafted with their composition. And FlyQuest going to have to give up this inhibitor without a fight. They try to clear the wave. They try to hold it as long as they can. But it just bought them a little bit of a time. And now Cloud9 setting up shop here as they're going to raise their own tower in the mid lane and look to play around that. Taking over more space. OK. <laughs> We're slowly moving across the map. More and more Cloud9 territory. What's less the FlyQuest here? They'll, they, they've, they've only got they're inside the wall. Inside the walls of their own base, basically. They could have the fountain, you know, they could yeah. sleep in there. Okay, okay. Fair enough. What more do you need, the you know? The soothing sounds of your fountain. <laughs> and for is now, it, is for it now soothing, your next or is it starts? like haunted? Because that's where people respawn. <laughs> sure. You know, like, can you hear, like, the screams of your oh, teammates? <laughs> <laughs> While they're dead. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, think of it, it could be a messed up place. Then they just pop out of the ground out of nowhere. Are they going to be happy about that? Now I'm going to have nightmares about the fountain yeah. and uh, all the ghosts. There you go. <laughs> Why do you acquired. think when you spawn in the game, you got to leave the fountain quick? Right. Otherwise, you're going to be haunted. They'll follow you out there. It's kind of messed up. Fountain did just get a buff, too. Uh, the healing is faster now. There so at least you can get out of there quicker. <laughs> That's I guess. true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Before the psychic damage. Yeah, exactly. Really gotta takes get... hold. <laughs> I got to get out of here. Honestly. FlyQuest might be getting out of here pretty quick too, though. I uh, think so. 8,000, the gold lead for Cloud9. And yeah, I mean, with with all the answers here to the poke that you, they've gone over, I mean, uh, the onslaught of Siege will continue. Cloud9 looking to play on mid and bottom, of course. Top side, Super Minions will do the job for them. So mm -hmm. JoJo fairly safe in mid just to keep this one while they slowly usher up bottom side, Fudge doing his work. Yep, going to be continually shoving this in. You know, we normally talk a lot about Azir scaling, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know how this build scales. Um, I mean, it seems like the base damage is, it seems like he's still doing real damage. Yeah, and looking pretty good hard, to me. Hard to knock down. It's, it's a pretty cool build. I think it actually makes a lot of sense against this composition specifically, where it is so much about the poke, it's so much about the burst. You know, they, they've drafted for healing from Nidalee, healing from Senna. They've drafted really durable laners. The only way they can do anything is if they can one-shot. You can't one-shot this Azir. There's the Emperor's Divide and Whippo. He's not nearly as tanky as that Azir. Wishes he was, but he's going to go down in a hurry as Cloud9 step forward. There's the Flash. The Depth Charge connects onto Masu, and it's the Dredge Line onto Busio. You thought they were going for 180 carry, but they can take either one of them as Masu's going to flash out. Inspire Twisted Advance forward, but it's not going to mean anything. This is Cloud9's base now. They're pushing forward and looking to put the finishing touches on on this one, Kobe. Cloud9, they've made the adjustments. They are back with a vengeance. Cloud9 coming off that two week break and looking damn good after it. Jojo flying forward, looking to knock down these final members here. FlyQuest trying to turn it around on the Berserker who is getting low and they have the benefit of that fountain healing them up here, but it's not gonna mean much. Cloud9 gonna be able to finish off the Nexus here in sub 30 minutes and they are back, baby. Looking strong after the two-week break, a dominant win over FlyQuest. We are so back. Whew. Until tomorrow. <laughs> and lose? Never mind. <laughs> but for now, we're back. Honestly, really, really good stuff there from Cloud9. Not worried for a second. The rumors. Oh. Got a little, little quick listen in. All right, Jack's yeah. ready. Let's get it away. You can if you, if you want to. Do you want to check damage? This is a big win. Yeah. Who did more? Was it the Azir or the uh, or the Nidalee? Definitely not the Nidalee. I wasn't dealing any damage this game. I was just pressing E on my Azir while he walked forward.
we're trolling to not get the damage. What is going on here? Oh, I'm, I'm so... Okay. I think we're done here. No, uh, anyway, Blabber, uh, big win after the break. What did you work on the most during the, the break weeks? Um, I would say, like, we kind of just try to figure out what our team identity was um, on this team and what was working for us. And uh, we just started shifting, I guess, our style into what worked more for us. And we just had to talk about, hey, what what's best for us as a team, what chance we should be playing. And, yeah, I guess it worked out today. And how does the Renekton <laughs> factor into all this fudge? Renekton in Italy is broken. Renekton is back. C9 fudge, Renekton is back. The croc. The croc in the top. The croc in the top. Uh, Blabber, uh, no another follow-up on the Nidalee and the season so far. You guys are now 5-5, five and five, so like, what are you really focused on throughout the rest of the regular season? Only four more games left. Um, well, currently we're still focused on getting into playoffs. Um, it's, not, it's not guaranteed, and uh, it's looking rough right now. Actually, not that bad. After we went today, it's not looking that rough, but it was looking pretty rough before, so uh, I think our goal is still to uh, make it into playoff playoffs right now. Yeah. And Jojo, since, since you walked past, we got the pregame trash talk. Do you feel like your compliments to Inspired had any impact on the victory today? Yeah, I was definitely in his head, and C9's back, so yeah. <laughs> uh, any, any final thoughts, Blabber? No. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's it from here. On the other side of this, we have another uh, episode from the latest Are You Smarter Than? and then Energy versus TL. And Fudge is happy. C9 is happy after this one. Welcome back for round three of Are You Smarter Than LCS Pro? All right, round three. Dragons in media and culture. Who watches movies and stuff? Yeah, this is not League of Legends related whatsoever. I hate those movies. For two points each, name one dragon from either Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon. Bonus points. Oh my God. If you can name more than one. Wait, Freck. I watched House of the Dragons before, but. You got these big snipes? Uh. I don't even know, to be honest. I don't know. I, right, I, 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 gotta like, come from I, I don't know any. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we might have to throw out this question if you no one has an answer. All right, I'll, I'll say an answer. Right. Deathwing. No, but that's a cool dragon name. All right. This Yu-Gi-Oh! dragon card is one of the most well-known monster cards and things in Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes. Blue eyes, white dragon? Yes. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? Yo, we need to at least get a point, guys. Come on. Yeah. Go, easy, go easy on this one. No, you got right. this. Let's go, Bill. In Pokemon, dragon type moves have no effect against what type of Pokemon? Yeah. Fairy type. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. Come back season, guys, come on. Remember, the last thing is entirely bogus, so you might be able to make up your points there. In the Chinese Zodiac, there are elemental dragons, just like in League of Legends. Name all five elements for one point for each element. Oh. It's yes. uh, the ocean element. Yes, that's okay. one. Okay, okay. Fire element. Yes, that's the second. Wind element. No, wrong. That's not wind? Oh my god. Air? No. Oh. That was also I wind. Thought, it was I thought back this to was like you. The air you can confer with your team after. I think try light and talk. Light Earth, and Earth have been light and talk. Light and dark. Okay. I don't yeah. know what else right. after that. Yeah, we can do that, sure. Uh, so I'm going to go for Earth. Yes. And light and dark. No. Oh, light and dark aren't it? Mountain. No. The other two left are gold and wood. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. What? Bro, no gold and wood. What is wood like even? I don't know what these are. We're almost done. That was it for round three. Now it's on to catch up XP. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <laughs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste.
what makes a yordle? I'm glad that you asked. Explaining the answer is no easy task. Sure, yordles agree in both size and in name, but that doesn't mean we're exactly the same. In Gadgeting, yordles are all about tech, like Rumble, inventor of flame-spitting mechs. There's bots, electricians, a chemist or two, explosions set off by suspicious shampoo. The yordles of Greensprout grow lush, wholesome crops. They farm and they garden, they fish and climb rocks. You think you're outdoorsy? You might lose that bet to Timo, the Grove's greatest vandal scout yet. For fresh inspiration, escape to the aisle of artists, musicians, and chefs by the mile. With Lulu to grant you that whimsical spark, you might find yourself at a huge water park. In Yarnville, where yordles make scarves and warm hats, it's there you'll find knitters and Yumi the cat. This stuff is like magic wherever you walk. Yarn houses, yarn bridges, a yarn talking sock. From surfing to fashion, from acting to math, we've all different passions, our own unique path. Some call us obsessive, some say it's a phase. That one little thing sends us into a craze. When Yordle can't tinker or teach or make art, it ain't long before our whole world falls apart. However we fix it, we must fix it soon. By might or by magic, we're giant harpoon! But one thing's for sure, that for worse or for better, what makes us all yordles?